we're looking to get it between those two points, which is uh, hips and like uh, head neck articulation. So if you imagine a pulley system, uh, the pulley system goes to the crown of the head, that's the up, that's your spinal length. And then what's the down of the pulley system is the chest. All right. Now, um, what, what is housed in the chest is the diaphragm. And this is, I was chatting with Craig when we first met. This next to, you, you won't really hear about this outside of this mode of work called um, DNS, Dynamic Neuromuscular Stability. It came out of the Prague School, so obviously Prague is in the Czech Republic. And for whatever reason, over about the last 80 years, there's been a series of geniuses um, that have worked out that, that area, and they've been observing infant development for about 80 years, and they're also academic, that is professors, um, and they've each got their own story, but they're um, this idea of, a, of a, a functional ideal around moving came from watching babies. So you get most of your development in the first year of life around moving, and it sort of reaches its maturity at four. So zero to four is an incredibly important time in terms of these programs in the brain and nervous system. So that's, that's how we know about this. So in other words, what's the background of this knowledge? It's 80 years of observation of infant development. What happens when we start to go to school is we start to do something called phys ed, and it has nothing to do with um, stability, posture, breathing, um, and how we know how long our spine is, these types of things. We run around cones, we try and come first. Uh, we sit in chairs, and so this is how the changes already start to start to begin. So in other words, this pattern that brought us to upright in the first four years is meant to run through a lifespan. So at 80, 60, 25, whatever, it's the same pattern. So we could call it intrinsic stability. So I'm just, I'm just trying to paint a picture of how confusion or whatever comes in and how we maybe start to have problems. So Professor Collage is the he's a professor, he's a, he's a physiotherapist. He has really put the diaphragm on the map. There's lots of studies if you're interested in the academic side of things. But the diaphragm sitting here is two things. It's a shape changer. So when we breathe, the two cavities change their shape in three dimensions. The lungs attach to the top surface of the diaphragm. So when we breathe properly, we, the lungs stretch by about a third. And then all the organs are sitting underneath the diaphragm. So when we breathe properly, we also compress, um, massage, and talk to our, our whole um, where all the organs are sitting underneath. So in other words, when the diaphragm pushes down, it misses nothing. And the pelvic floor is what receives this push. So the second thing the diaphragm is, is a pressure regulator. So the only way to stabilize um, this part of my back, so lumbar spine and also thoracic spine, is by pressure. So there's no muscle that doesn't. So that's really key understanding from this morning, and I'll, I'll sort of relate it to your swimming as I go. So to be stable, to be strong, to be long, all the things we know are ideal, has to come from this understanding of the goal of the diaphragm. And the push of the diaphragm asks for the cooperation of the abdominals. So the, we've got like layered abdominals from, from deep to superficial. So the deepest layer, as you, you would have probably heard from the if any of you are doing Pilates or your training is the transverse abs. Then we have the internal oblique on top of that, the external oblique on top of that, and then obviously the rectus abdominis is running straight down. So the, with breathing, the, the cooperation of the um, abdominals is such that if the abdominals are too tight, um, they'll actually stop this down and push the diaphragm and will actually inhibit the ability to grab pressure. So sometimes this needs to actually be released. Um, and then if the shoulders are dominating, it's, we can't bring the chest position down in order to get a horizontal diaphragm. So that, these 
these two axes going from all the chest position. When that's ideal, so the axes um, are horizontal to each other, that equals ideal opportunity for intra-abdominal pressure and also posture. Now when, as you can imagine, if this line here is oblique, which in most cases it is, and if the pelvis was oblique, and those arrows are pushing, then we're going to get a, a bulging here and an increase in this curve here. Right. And that's largely what we see in active people. So the, the energy is escaping through an inability to contain the energy via horizontal axis. So that becomes the key thing I work on in my exercises and my training. So if you're